Yeah. I, well, Bill, would the bourbon boom have a lot to do with people maybe doing things to make a dollar as opposed to trying to create the, the best product? Uh, I think I think first of all the Big Ten, right? The ones that were in Kentucky, the ones that produce ninety percent of the uh, the whiskey uh, or the bourbon on the market, phenomenal. I mean, let's let's face it, pound for pound, you know, Evan Williams bottled in bond for nineteen bucks, fantastic, Beautiful. right? Wonderful, I mean, wonderful, good juice. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, those guys, you know, as much as they were looking to, you know, you know, make money, be profitable. I think they had a lot of institutional kind of quality through Parker, through Harlan, uh, that kept quality up. Those guys we didn't have to worry about. I think if anything, we saw some of, uh, in most distilleries across the country that opened up uh, in the 2000s uh, until now, kind of cutting corners because they didn't have good business plans. They didn't have, uh, they didn't understand, uh, you know, economies of scale, uh, they did a lot of experimenting, thinking that we can maybe cut some corners. Ooh. And I think that that really hurt the craft movement overall. And at the same time, you know, it wasn't like the craft beer movement where you had a lot of big institutional breweries uh, brewing a lot of really bad beer. Yeah. And then the craft guys came in and said, well, wait a minute, we can bring our product to market immediately. We can bring it at a cost that's competitive. Uh, and we can bring mm -hmm. a superior quality. Exactly. The craft movement is in a position where, obviously, to lay down whiskey for four years or five years, they don't have the, and then to produce it at a rate, to buy the corn in bulk, to buy the barrels in bulk, uh, they don't have the economies of scale to make it work. And then you got that time factor. We can mess with everything in the world. We can, you can mess with Mother Nature, but Father Time is not negotiable. You know, it's something that's priceless, but once spent, and you've got to have it. I, I, I yeah, think, absolutely. I think even Julian said that. It's yeah. like going back to his pappy. He says, you got to have the time. Yeah. It's got to have the time. It's got to rest in that barrel, and it's got to be good product in a good place for it to... Yeah, if you, yeah. If you don't have a business plan that allows you to age your whiskey for four uh, years... Exactly. Which is, to me, like a, a nearly, a, nearly a minimum, nearly a minimum um, then don't get in the business. You're going to produce a subpar product, most likely. What is it? You need a good, a good accountant, a clever lawyer, and a forgiving priest. Yes, yes, absolutely. And you got to have a bank. You got, you yeah. got, you got to have a banker, or somebody that's willing to say, "Okay, I'm going to lay out X number of dollars," or somebody in the finance end. Right. That's going to be willing to say, "We're going to wait." You know, we're, we'll, and and that's, yeah. you know, Bill Brocky, you know what I'm talking yeah. about here. That's that's that's. You think Vegas is a gamble? That's not a gamble. That's like. And all it takes is one situation for it not to be right. We can have leakage, we could have storm, we could have uh, structural failure. I mean, there's a lot to be said for, yeah. Yeah, with, with, go ahead. Bill, so are we seeing some of these same type of issues on the scotch, on the cold soft water? Do they have the same type of issues? Yeah. No, well, no, was. no, simply because you had you have a hundred. You have a hundred different distilleries that have been distilling quality product this whole time. So what you see in the Scotch market is completely different. So whereas Scotch was, say, in the mid 2000s up to 2010, 11, more expensive pound for pound than bourbon. Now bourbon is more expensive pound for pound than Scotch, and simply because you have this rediscovery of this amazing spirit that was forgotten for so many years and then for so long you only had 10 distilleries not even producing as much as they could simply because the demand wasn't there so now they've been playing catch up for for the last decade um, and it's just this whole new exposure to a whole new uh, generation of people uh, more cultural uh, spreading out globally has created a demand for this very strict narrow tenant whiskey that it just can't keep up with so prices keep skyrocketing no. with scotch you have a hundred people that have been expanding their uh production facilities and you see this amazing quality and in a sense i think a sleeper because the quality and the density of product out there and the price point is better than bourbon it's flipped it is completely flipped since 2011 where an average scotch for quality is cheaper than the average bourbon quality you know now bourbon will yeah. play catch up but it, right now like 
if someone said, what's your, what's your value pick? Scotch. Now, that being said, you have then something like these, which, which are crazy because we have a, a three to four year old, both of these whiskeys, and you're, wait a minute, you're like, wait a minute, it's only three or four years, and it's amazing? Like, yeah. I'll put this yeah. up against age-dated stuff, 15 years, whatever, simply because the distillation is amazing. The new make is amazing. It, it, Everything's exa amazing. Exactly. It, and, and everything has to figure into that. Yeah. From, from the still itself and the mint, Mike Sherman, mm -hmm. then don't. Yeah, I know, Mike. Yeah. Mike, always go to the guy who makes the equipment, who makes the product. You know, a lot of folks will say, well, let's get, what, what's, what's the big deal on the store? Go to the real source, go to the Genesis, and he will tell you a lot of these different distillers. I can tell you how they're doing it because I put their machine in that's doing it for them. I can tell you what's going in it. I can tell you how they're handling it. I can tell you how they're aging it. Um, the, the, the scotch thing of, of a long time ago was, and, and still I, I see a lot of times you'll see the sale things come over on your little internet, on your <laughs> telephone, you know. Uh, a bottle of McGallan went for X number of thousand dollars. Uh, you know, as, as, as a couple of folks over here, some of your neighbors right here in the district have some of the big bottles that, you know, the price is so high, you've got to get up on the stepladder to see it. Um, but I agree with you 100% in that a lot of the new distillates that are coming off have immediately, they, they've like jettisoned to that, uh, to that level. And they're holding it. They're holding it. Uh, the problem is everybody else is coming in for one or the other, either the personal enjoyment, for the enjoyment of their guests, and then there's that other element that really just kind of stirs yeah. me up to talk about it, that, yeah, I want to make sure that this is still a family show and I don't want to, to, to get out of line by what I might say. I, I tell you, uh, when you look back, and, and, and here's really the revelation is, when you look back on the whiskeys that we're willing to pay a thousand bucks a bottle for, and you look back at 1970s, old Fitzgerald, yes. old Taylor, yeah. old right. granddad, and you, and you see that bonded tax trip, and you flip it over the back and it says, this whiskey is four years old. Yes. And you're like, this shit is amazing. <laughs> yes. Why is the four-year-old whiskey out there not as amazing? And then all of a sudden, Willet comes on board with four-year-old. Boom. It's crazy. And, and High Wire and New Riff and 80 Laws and, uh, God, who, I, I just feel like I'm missing so many. Uh, Castle and Key. I Castle was just at 72 hours Castle ago. Castle and Key. Their new make is freaking delicious. Beautiful facility. Like, and New Riff, what they're doing with their peated, uh, peated mash and uh, the back setter and the malted, they're probably pound for pound, I think, the first smaller distillery, because I don't want to use crap, but they're, they're smaller than, than, than the big guys that are, are so creative. And they, what, 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 they took experiments and you would say, this shit is going to fail, but they just nailed it. One after another, Maltster, the, the winter, then and the back setter what, what's, uh, what's right. the one that i bought a bottle of from you your, your private label new riff new riff yeah they're killing it that I was mean, that was i mean but what was the what was the makeup on that oh that was a uh, typical rye I, bourbon i didn't bother looking it was just that good i said okay it's their 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 biggest problem is they did experiments uh single malts and stuff and you know they they haven't done them consistently and now they're like, shit, we got to now wait another four years. <laughs> but they were all freaking killer. Yeah. Like, this is insane. And you know why? Because they came from it like Jay, uh, one of the distillers there, is us. He came as a drinker. He came and yeah. said, you know, I'm a drinker. He really thought things out. And he was like, what would I want to drink? Mm -hmm. And it freaking worked. And it wasn't like, what can I sell? What new experiment will get me a skew on a, on a bar thing? No. He said, what would be cool? What would I want what, to drink? Like. And he's nailing it. And that's what we, that, that right there, that's almost like the entire uh, synopsis. What you like. I, I don't care what the reviews say because we can, you know, we can type in everything in the world and it not be that. Uh, it's what, according to the dictates of your palate. We, we have a say at, at Virtue, at Virtue, and we, we've had staff gatherings and such. Never, ever would you hear one of them say, no, I don't like that. That's just awful, huh? Now, I'm sure it is good to some, but to me, it is not my palate. Right. It's not my palate. It's still respectful. You know, being a child of the South, I was not drug up. I was raised. And it's a matter of saying what might be good to you might not be good to me. You can't argue someone's palate. You, you can't argue someone's palate. No, no, no. You and, know that. And that's a great and thing about what you do and what I do. Yes. Is we'll take you on the journey. We'll take you on the journey. And we're going to figure out, you, 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 we'll go to palate. We're just going to keep dialing you in. Till we find that great bourbon, till we find that great scotch, till we find that great 
you know, whatever. I mean, we are going to work through your palate what until, you like. yeah. That's why I like flights. Yeah, absolutely. I love flights. Yeah. You know, not a whole lot of that was going in Rocky. You know, there, it wasn't a big thing in Old Town until we come to be, and it's like, you get to date a number of girls, but you don't have to marry either one of them here. <laughs> you get to enjoy, what's, and, and it's a fair thing. It, you yeah. can't be any more unfair than, than having that.